This audio, right? <laughs> it's video too, guy. <laughs> it's Midnight in the Bay podcast. I'm your host, Alex Woody. Um, and it's episode 180. And yeah, you, you've read the sticker right. We're vaccinated, guy. Got the Pfizer. Yep, got a little German going. Hope I don't turn into a Nazi. But um, we're fired up. I'm a cool kid now. I feel really cool. And I had to bring in another cool kid on the podcast. Um, This guy for sure probably has a Star Wars poster in his house. Uh, Give it up for comedian Frankie Marcos. Oh, what's good? Alex Woody, thank you for having me here, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll take this sticker off. I was wearing it all down the street and people were looking at me like, oh, my God, you're so cool. That is. And, uh, no, that's a uh, vagina you, Kickstarter 3000. That's a. Hey, my wife uh, wouldn't sleep with me until I got vaccinated. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you get vaccinated? Not yet. Piece of shit. Oh, oh my God. Turn the podcast off. This yeah, I know. Horrible. I went to lunch the other day with three other yeah. people who were all vaxxed, and I felt like a homeless piece of dick, dude. When they were like, "Oh yeah, we're all vaxxed. It's okay," and they're like, "You're vaxxed, right?" And I was like, "No." And then they just looked at me like, "Fuck ah." Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll, I'll get. I'll get it soon, though. You know. Yeah, you know, uh, a woman at my work today called me a chicken for getting the vaccine. Wow. Yeah, because she's like, I'm not getting it. And I'm just like, I've shot up heroin. I've put alcohol in my body. I mean, what's a little vaccine going to do? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And dude, I I was nervous about getting it and it wasn't a big deal. I was I was like giving myself symptoms before I walked in. I was like, ha, 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 you know, <laughs> and uh, you, I didn't even feel the shot. They put the shot in. And went and I was like, that's it. I was like, I didn't even feel anything. And the nurse was like, well, next time I'll use a bigger gauge. I'm like, uh, I hope I don't get this guy oh, <laughs> a bigger no. needle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Give you a so, creepy needle. The creepiest part though, is after you got to hang around for 15 minutes, they call it, they call it the uh, observation room. Mm. Right. And I was just picturing guys in lab coats with cameras, like zooming in on my face. Like, let's see if this fat guy keels over and dies. <laughs> <laughs> but As I did. We planned. <laughs> Dude. And I was I was thinking about my my single friends. I was texting them like, you guys got to go to the hospital and hang out. Fuck the bar. Fuck the club. I saw some. I was like, God damn. I mean, no wonder my wife is a nurse. She's hot. These chicks are hot. I was like, I get it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the culture, just like, you know, sexual harassment in restaurants. I guess nurses, you know, similar in that way. It's, uh, well, you can get away with it if you're sick. If you go in and you're laying in the bed, and they're like, especially if you're an old guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's just a creepy old guy. You know, let him pitch <laughs> your ass. You know what I mean? Young guys can't really get away with that. Unless you got cancer. If you got cancer, they're going to let you pinch the ad. Maybe nice. grab the tit. Oh, yeah, he's dying. Ah, you're not. <laughs> you don't end up dying. It's just awkward when you leave the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah. just say you just got vaxxed, but you thought you had cancer. But it was just the side effects of the vax. Right, right, right. Yeah, the side effects is me being a creep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Frankie. I might use that. Yeah. Why not? But- Fuck it. Tonight, my wife's going to be like, oh, my God, what are you doing to me? You know, I'm on my period. I'm like, hey, it's the vaccines make me do <laughs> weird shit. You know what I mean? Ready to get my red wings. You know, <laughs> you have your red wings. Uh, I've never done that. I've had sex with uh, while the woman was on her period uh, a few times, though. When oh, so you have them. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, I thought it was the complete uh, mortifying eating Pussy, wow. Oh my Jesus, dude. What kind of animal you think I am? I, no. <laughs> is that what red wings is? I thought that's what it was because of the wings on your face, like the uh, Joker. But I, I didn't know. I didn't know the real definition was just fucking well on the period. That's not even, I don't what's know. What's that called? What's that called? Fucking on the period. That should have a name. Yeah, it should because it sounds right. Doesn't that make yeah. sense? Like, yeah, it does. Maybe red, call that red rocket. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of, I almost passed out one time. It's kind of too much. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's the same thing a guy goes through when it gets damaged. You're both uh-huh. seeing blood. You know what I mean? All right. So it, it's kind of like, that's the one area you don't want anything to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I always worry about that, not washing my hands before I go to the urinal. Because you can get, I've read stories about guys getting gangrene on their thing and it falling off. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's not from washing your hands, but uh, yeah, Harvey Weinstein had gangrene. That's why he was such a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was one guy, I swear to God, you can look this up. You probably don't want to. This guy, his thing came off and then they, they rebuilt a penis on his forearm. What? And then their plan was, I don't know if they've done it or not. I haven't done a follow-up uh uh, search, but their plan was to take that and put it back down there. Which my whole wow. thing is, why not keep it up there where you like shoot it like a an Iron Man? And, you know, what I mean? <laughs> that'd be cool. Sex is a little easier, and you're getting ripped because you use right. your arms. You know, what I mean? hell yeah. <laughs> I wonder why they would have to use that as a prereq, though. Like, okay, first we got to put on your arm before. Yeah, isn't why? that a weird place to grow it? Why not grow it on the leg? This guy's got to wear long sleeves in the summer. Yeah. And even <laughs> then, he's bulging, and you're wondering why he has. Is he a magician? What's up his sleeve? That's hella weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Okay, wait, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, crazy. I would hate to be that guy. But my whole thing is like, uh, I wash the hands before I go in. Ever since I read that article, I used to not. And then I wash them after my hands are falling apart because I'm washing them so much that on top of the being out in COVID world. But this right. one guy at my work, I'm washing my hands and he's this uh, Middle Eastern guy. He comes in and he immediately goes to the paper towel thing, ching, 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 goes to the sink next to me, uh, puts water on it and then goes to the urinal. Like, I'm thinking he puts that around his thing. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. A mummy <laughs> dick? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, isn't that weird? That is ultra weird. Yeah, so I didn't say anything because he's the uh assistant manager. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's something you could say to your coworker buddy, but you can't say that to the boss. Bosses right. can do whatever the fuck they want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some uh I don't know uh who, but somebody used to stand on the toilets at one of the jobs that I've worked at before. Yeah. Like literally stand on it with their feet on the toilet seat, which was like a little enough. person, like a little uh, person. No, the regular oh. person. <laughs> wow. Wow. A regular person. <laughs> <laughs> right, wow. Uh, yeah. Full size deluxe adult just standing on the toilet seat. They put a sign up. These don't stand on the weird. Right? That is the weirdest. That's that's, First or second next to what I just told you. I've never heard that before. Because first off, you can break the toilet. Right. And that's embarrassing. And then you hurt your tailbone, you know, and get pee on you. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks peeing and pooping at work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the worst when you're sitting there and then someone recognizes your shoes and then they start talking to you. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. Psychos. They're like, what about the Yankees? I'm like, what about my poo cramps? Leave me alone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what about the fact that you're immune to this deathly? Like, how are you still in here? Right, right, right. Well, my whole thing is if I'm going to the bathroom, if someone else comes in, I got to go. Like if I'm in the stall, I got to get out of there because I don't want to smell or hear <laughs> what that guy's about to launch. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm the same way. Yeah, it's like uh, fight or flight kicks in. And you right. gotta evacuate hella quick. It's like when the the friend of your girlfriend she gets too drunk and she starts like picking fights with guys in the bars. You gotta be like, hey, we gotta right. get out here. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna get bad. It's gonna get yeah. nasty. You know, and yeah. someone's gonna get hurt. Someone's gonna get hurt. Right. The only thing that was cool about if you had like discreet or like really bathrooms that were really far from where the action was at work, then that was nice because then. You could just like go hide away or either oh I love shit that. and take your time, right? Or like yeah. pretend you're taking a shit and then just go on IG or YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's pretty porn, nice porn getting hub. paid for it. Yeah, Pornhub. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I my old job, we had the individual bathrooms. 
you know, the unisex or trans or whatever. Yeah. And so I'd go in there and hit that lock button and it would like teleport me somewhere magical. You know what I mean? No one's asking me questions. And you're right. Sometimes I wouldn't even go to the bathroom. Sometimes I do stretching. I do jumping jacks in there, you know, touch my toes. If I'm fat, I got to stretch the back out. You probably done that. You know, it'd be funny to do a fitness video where it's in a bathroom. I mean, you'd have work. to sanitize it at work. That would be really funny. That would be hilarious. But, Dude, uh, what? Seriously, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have to do that. That's a great idea. It's a funny ass sketch. Well, you do fitness videos, don't you? I do. Yeah, I guess that'd be more of a sketch. You couldn't actually maybe be serious and do a fitness video. I mean, you mm, are your yeah, fitness videos serious? Sometimes they're serious. Sometimes I do, you know, impressions of a extreme, like uh, you know, a fitness radical. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my wife does the at-home videos, and they they crack me up. Like the yeah. there's like walking videos, like come on, you can do it, come on. Yeah, <laughs> and they're hyped. They're like on coke or something. They're on meth. They're like, yeah, come on. Yeah, I thought it'd be funny to do a sketch where you have one of those, and you just see like a chubby guy in the background slowly start to die. <laughs> and he's like barely doing it and he's just he looks like he's gonna die and no one's paying attention you know what i mean I, I, that'd be funny or like a uh i've thought about a uh a yogurt a yoga yogurt uh, a yoga teacher that has uh narcolepsy uh-huh and just keeps falling asleep during class and shit <laughs> trying to teach i don't know yeah i like the idea of the dude dying in the back and nobody's paying attention or <laughs> Um, or they could be I, like in the yeah. front and everybody's just working around them. And like the yoga oh. is the, the, the coach That's is funny. ignoring it. Right. He's, and everybody yeah. like, yo, he's, he's getting carried out on a stretcher and then just <laughs> not reacting at all. Like, let's keep going. Don't get distracted, bro. To have him at the end, have him on the stretcher in the corner and like his family's there crying over him and shit. <laughs> And everyone's just like, come on, keep going. Don't be a <laughs> pussy. Don't be a quitter. <laughs> that would be good. We'll have to do that. We'll yeah, have to do I'm, that. I'm down. Well, I'm going to uh, be out there uh, this weekend, and then I'll be there for a few weeks, and I'm actually training at the time, too, of course. But uh, we shoot sketches on weekends all the time. So, Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah we, could, we could do that shit. Yeah, yeah. Let me hop on that. Um, what are you training for, Jake Paul fight? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be cool hey that would be you should send a message like you white piece of shit he yeah. probably would challenge you probably but i gotta challenge other unknown tiktokers you gotta get <laughs> you gotta start a comedy like boxing league that would be dope that would be dope i've seen yeah or have you seen uh barstool sports has something like that kind yeah. of my boy sean latham is on there he was on uh fluffy stand-up revolution oh, okay yeah and he uh he ended up fighting uh somebody on there and then my other dude out here um in la um steven briggs he fought somebody because i guess he stole jokes so he was like let's throw some gloves on bitch and they fucking Whoa. then they fought <laughs> yeah yeah, I would. For, I want to fight all the people that, that have uh, denied me spots on shows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I guess, I, yeah, you know, it uh, it'd be it'd be funny because I, I feel like comedians do bicker at each other and it gets a little testy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think which is stupid, which is which is stupid. You know what I mean? Right. Um. Oh my god! Hang on, let me just double check the battery here. I just got a new laptop, so I'm trying not to charge it so much. Okay, we're at sixty-two percent. Perfect. Golden. That's the same percentage that my liver is functioning at. So it's oh yeah, that's good to match. So you're Flawless. a comedian. You're a comedian, right? Uh, <laughs> you can and say you- that. <laughs> and you recently moved to LA. Yeah, it's been uh six months now already, hella fast. How many dumb Frankie goes to Hollywood jokes have you heard? Oh my god, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Frankie yeah. Munoz uh, Munez, uh, uh, uh. Right, right. Oh, my last name, Woody. You can imagine some of the nicknames I got. Boner, cocksucker, Woodrow, <laughs> you know, all of them. And I just tell the teachers, like, I just want to, you know, learn. 
you know, can we get back to class? You know, <laughs> they were the worst, you know, right. working, working material into the podcast. He. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My Spanish teacher was calling me Frankie Mecos, which means come in Spanish. <laughs> oh my God. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. <laughs> that's uh, that'd be a cool porn star name. If you ever got into porn. Yeah. You know I mean kind of a double entendre? There's never um, been a, there's never been a comedian porn star has there i don't think so not that well, we know of hey 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 not that we know of hey we got a market for you i'll be I, your agent yeah I'll pick, all the, I'll pick all the girls for you sorry <laughs> sorry i know you have a girlfriend sorry girlfriend if you're <laughs> she's in the corner like i'm gonna kill that chubby fat guy nah. next time i see him <laughs> no i don't um, have a girlfriend i'm dating somebody but i don't have a girlfriend oh but i'm dating wait, somebody wait 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 it's kind of a mind fuck right there you're dating well, someone but she's not a girlfriend. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, that sounds it's my fun. whole life, man. Running from commitments my whole life. I'm always like, I get find somebody really cool. And then I either fuck it up or um, I don't know. I, I treat them well, but then uh, I just, I'm like, eh, I don't want to settle down. Fuck this. And then I just leave or, you know, not, I don't just leave, but I'll be like, Hey, I'm, you know. Yeah. I get, I get that. I guess I, I had a kid with mine. So that kind of, I'm not saying that's the only reason why we stayed, but I think that was like, all right, well, let's try to work this out. And then we actually liked each other, yeah. you know, but it's not hard Do married guys, me, some other guys I know, we have a hard time with commitment, even being married. I mean, it's, it's a job, it's work, right? You got to work at relationships. And uh, let me tell you every day, especially around this time, I want to kill whoever started the leggings because <laughs> I see these girls in leggings and I got to look at pictures of my family. I'm like, this is, this is amazing. I want to cheat on my wife right now. Right. Right? <laughs> and I'm sure my wife feels the same way. She's like, Oh my, I want to get my ass to look like that. You know, <laughs> the best thing to do if you're in a relationship, have your girl catch you watching porn because she'll start working out heavily. That's what my wife did. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I don't want my wife, I don't want to catch my wife watching porn because then I'll have to start working out, <laughs> you know. Well, luckily you haven't yet. You're not going yeah, to. Yeah. Going no, to. I'm not. She did tell me she wants me to buy her a toy. So I'm hoping she's talking about a Hot Wheels car, not a dildo. Yeah. That no. means, because, hey, that means I'm not doing my job right. Well, right? Could be. or could I don't be. know. I don't know. Maybe she wants to level up or I Maybe don't know. Maybe she's trying to get to my level. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's probably what it is. She's like, he's so good with his hands. I'm not. Get me some, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. Every Life's complicated. Relationships. I get the I, I get the no commitment. You know? It's scary. You know why? It's because I have a lot of uh, friends that are from all ages. So people that have been married for a really long time. So I look at my mom and my stepdad, I look at my comic friends who are married and all of them. And then is, you know, the common through line is like, obviously it's tough and that's, it's such a whack ass thing to say. And like, but at least I'm being honest with it, you know, cause it's like, you, you're scared of like what putting in the work to put in a relationship. And it's like, uh, well, uh, I just see like other people, you know, the through line of like, it, it just gets really hard. That's the bottom line. It's like, well, it's harder for you too because you're a comedian and they have to be extremely supportive. Right. And they're basically on the back end. I see all the gigs you do. It, I mean, you have to have someone that wants to go to the gigs and stuff and want, and wants to support, you know? Right. Um, so that's one thing I worry about with my wife and kid is like, am I spending enough time with them? I got to have that balance, but also that comedy calls you and you got to get in enough reps because what's the point of doing it if you're not hitting it hard? Right. That's why I tell my, that's how my wife is supportive. I tell her that I'm like, and you got to tell whoever relationship you're in, guy, animal, you know, old woman, tell them, you know, wh why do this if I'm just going to do it once a week? Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So you know, it, it's tough. Um, it's kind of funny because I started comedy while already in the relationship. 
It'd be like if my wife came up to me one day and was like, I'm going to be a singer. <laughs> I'm going to be a professional singer. And she just started going to bars and stuff. You know what I mean? So I get her point and stuff, but the whole bottom line is find someone supportive. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah, that's definitely the case right now. And even how, I, you know, how old are you? I just turned 31. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm 33. We're both young. You know, yeah. you'll you'll find the right person. It'll work out. You know what I mean? And if not, blow up in comedy and find someone that will marry you for your money. You know? Right. That's scary shit. No, I mean, Martin Lawrence had a, a bit about it. How like. The way a woman talks to you when you don't have money and the way a woman talks to you when you do have money yeah. is like completely, off, <laughs> you know, different. Like they'll they'll do whatever for you when you have money, but when you don't, they're like yelling at you, you piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you're doing chores when you don't have money, but when you right. have money, you don't have to do chores. You know? Yeah. So yeah, shut the fuck up, money. Like uh, Chappelle right. had a joke about that too. About oh really having hella money? Yeah. He's like, yeah, he could tell his wife to shut the fuck up, and she's not gonna do anything because he's got all uh, the money. <laughs> that's good. I like that. That's funny. He was like, he could sing the, uh, he could sing the Big Sean and Two Chains. Got everything. I got everything. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> complain. I cannot. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's true. It's so true, though. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the crazy part is like nowadays, um, and this is the circumstance right now is the reverse of that. And that's starting to, I don't want to say normalize or whatever the fuck, but it's like, it's becoming more common of, you know, women being the breadwinner or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like the girl right. that I'm dating is in tech. So she obviously is crushing with, you know, financially, she's crushing in a lot of ways, which is why I'm dating her. But, um, you know, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah your balls, like she makes yeah. a lot, huh? Yeah, I said your balls crushing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, nowadays, you know, that's that's more common. Women owning businesses and, you know, being in tech or whatever the fuck. It's tech mostly, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I I love it. You know what I mean? It's super I, I, dope. I, it's super dope. My wife's in nursing school, and when she gets out, oh, my God, you don't know how much weed and video games I'm going to buy. She's going to be <laughs> making, like, 200000 a year. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Hell Dude, I'm, yeah. I'm a minimum wage uh, worker for life. All right. <laughs> I didn't I didn't feel I didn't, uh, you know, finish school. You know, I'm a I'm number right. one DoorDash employee. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like dude. I like it because there's less pressure on us. Back in the day, they'd call us pussies. I mean, my dad still calls me a pussy, but like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, but you're right. Things are different. And that's why I'm for women, you know, um, Leveling uh, be, up, man. leveling up, being equal. You know, right. it, it's great. Less work in the bedroom. They're right. on top. They're <laughs> they're putting something in your butt. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. less work. They're for asking us, for you know? consent from us, and we will tremble and be like, I, I guess so. so yeah, <laughs> I like it. I li I'm I'm all for it. Um, I think they should make kids work on top of that, and then life would be really easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, hell yeah. Put those early labor laws into place effective immediately. You're five, you're hired. Well, and that's if I had my eight year old working, right. I could I could stay home and work on comedy all day right. instead of going to a job. And it's it's horrible. Yeah. But luckily, hands, typing, that's way too. Fuck do that. you do it? Do you do any work or you just do comedy? I just do comedy and training. I'm, I'm with you 100 percent when you said. I'm minimum minimum wage for life, like yeah. in the sense of I don't care that much about like I I do have big goals. But at the same time, if I didn't get them, I'm still happy as fuck either way. Like I'm yeah. I, like basically right now to answer your question, I'm barely paying my bills doing comedy and doing right. a little bit of training and just that like being able to be like, OK, I don't. I you don't need a lot. Money. You know, but I'm yeah. happy as fuck and my stress yeah. levels are down. You know, my peace, right. happiness is way up there as opposed right. to making, you know, 200K or whatever. And I'm just like big ass bags and just stressed right. out. And I have more of this alopecia. As you can see, I got a bald spot right here. A little oh, one. Yeah. Yeah, it used yeah. to be hella big. I used to have three jobs and work comedy. And then that's when I was oh. like, drop one of these fucking jobs. But anyway. Yeah, so, hey, yeah, that was smart because you look like me right now. If you didn't, you know what I mean? Look at that fucking <laughs> yeah. thing. God, I don't even want, I wear so many hats. 
I'm in denial still, but, uh, I, dude, I, I get it, dude. And it, unfortunately comedy is so fucking great yeah. that I don't want to work a job. And when yeah. I talk to my parents and other people that aren't comedians, they look at me like I'm delusional and maybe right. I am, I, maybe I am. And this is a dream and stuff, but yeah, I don't like my mom keeps wanting me, you got, you should work at PG and E and all, all these jobs that are going to take up way more time and uh, brain space and energy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, I kind of need like these, I'm doing a driving job. I'm doing like two driving jobs and it's perfect. Cause I could be going over jokes or, or editing videos. I mean, I know that's not legal, but <laughs> you know what I mean, but that's what I've been doing, you know? Right. So yeah. Hell yeah. You got I'm, the right, you got the right mindset. You're already on your way. That's the way to do it is yeah. find a job that doesn't take much from you. Like you said, mentally, physically, yeah. where you can yeah. use that leverage and still have your own world where they're not fucking right. taking over your sanity and everything. Right. I just wish it paid more. Right. Well, that's the thing is like what you're doing now is good because then you can start to leverage the gap, start to, you know, fill the gap of comedy and, and that job of like, because a lot of stand up comics think one way. It's just I want to get into the comedy clubs and I want to do good and I want to become good at my craft, which is great. That should be number one. But they forget about the other things of marketing themselves and the business right. side of it. Because right. that's that's part of it. it. It is a business and you have to be yeah. able to get into different markets. And then, it, you know, if you could just be a, a decent producer and just get one or two shows a month, then you got some supplemental income, you know, like you yeah. can make a thousand off one show and then you get, you know, two or three of them. OK, boom. Now I'm good. Now. now I just make, uh, you know, a thousand dollars doing shows or whatever. Let's right. say you even had let's say you had like four shows that did really yeah. good. Now your bills are paid and now you don't have to do work at all, you know? Right, right. Well, I guess that's the benefit. Are you saying run your own shows or like at a comedy club getting paid? Uh, running your own shit. Like, uh, yeah. Like if, and that's the thing too, is a lot of comics undervalue themselves and we think, right. like, oh, I can't get a nice venue or they don't know how to negotiate anything. And it's like, talk yeah. to other comics that run shit. Like, I right. like, you know, I, I'll, I'll clear a thousand in a night doing, doing my show. And I know other comics I'll make, you know, the same or more, you know, if you do it right. And do it does take time to build it, but yeah. you can do that shit. Like anybody can. Do you charge money for tickets? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're, we've got a couple of shows, me and Dave. Uh, uh, I think we hit you up for a retro show, but you're going to be there the week before. Yeah. Um, that that one's good we don't charge for tickets and uh we make a lot in tips we just do tips nice but um i don't know maybe we'll do tickets eventually it's like just building you know what i mean we have two other rooms uh in the area that they're tap houses that we're tr just trying to build and like one of the places they might pay us money because they're so nice and they like the show so like it's like kind of what you're saying, like building it with the owner. I mean, that could be some a sponsor sponsorship one time. I mean, who knows what the future can entail with that sponsorship? Oh my God, by a beer company, they could pay for you to go to gigs, you know? Right. Yeah. I used to so, like here's two things that you could do. Like one, I used okay. to when I used to run shows at a theater, um, mm -hmm. I used to ha you can go to Copy World and you can print 5000 tickets for like literally like $80. And oh. then you can use those to hit up local farmers markets or like music in the park or events. And you can just go up, <laughs> go up to strangers, just be like, <laughs> no, you could just go up and introduce yourself. <laughs> Tell them I'm a comic. I've done this, that, and that. Whatever the fuck, I bombed over here. I bombed over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And you lie, fucking... lie, and say you're on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but a lot of people, you know, you could be like, hey, despite my hair, I'm fucking young as shit, and I'm hustling. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, um, with no, those... but though, seriously though, they'll give you like, I would go up and I would just say, I'm done. This isn't this. I'm running a comedy show on this day at this place. I would love for you to come. I'm doing it for donations, but if not, your support would be dope. I have free tickets if you can't send a donation. And a lot of people would just be like, oh, that's that's cool. Here, here's five bucks or here's 10 bucks or how much does it actually cost? You know, and and, and then sometimes I'll be, what's your Instagram? Then you connect, boom, have them take pictures with the tickets and all of that costs nothing for you. And sometimes right. I would go for like an hour and a half and I would make like 
150 bucks, 200 bucks, just doing that. Nothing. Just talking. Oh, so they're purchasing the tickets from you right there and then. Right then and there. Cash in your pocket. And then when you leave, yeah. you got a bunch of cash in your pocket and you got people coming to your show. Hopefully. Usually it's a small ratio that comes. Like you give out 500 tickets, probably like, you know, 20 to 50 people will show up. But you made money and you got some new people to support you. So even people that will pay for the tickets won't go? That that happens too. That's common. I talked to yeah. uh, some producers about that and they're like, yeah, I sold 40 tickets tonight and there's only 30 people here, but I already got the money. Right, right. Well, that's smart. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. I've heard other people that run shows at like comedy clubs, they say it's easier because you can use the name of the club. Exactly, yep. Like Tommy T's gives you the buy one, get two in, you know what I mean? Um, but you're probably not getting as big of a cut because you got to go through the club. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a great idea. I haven't even thought about that, you know, and now things are opening up and there's people out. It's right. a great, great opportunity. So you, you just go to copy whatever world or or some kind of, you know, FedEx Whatever, copy Matt. I don't know if that's still around. Yeah, those copy World in Berkeley, and I think they got another one in SF. But they got that deal. It's like five thousand for like eighty bucks or something. Wow. Maybe a hundred, but you know, obviously you can yeah. get, give out a lot of tickets, and yeah. there you go. Yeah, yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, I'm hoping these. Uh, these are I've done shows before, but they weren't kind of like what we're doing right now. They're kind of more. Uh, like I had one at a weed club and it wasn't now it, it could turn into some. So, and there's, I see other venues too, but, and I, I think like some people get afraid, like, Oh, I don't want to be a, a producer. I just want to be a comedian. Well, I was telling my friends, if we had our own rooms out here, we don't have to go to these fucking pricks that tell us uh, good luck being a straight white guy. Fuck you, dude. Right. Yeah. You know I mean, uh you don't have to rely on anyone else. You just have to rely on doing what well the comedy clubs and then maybe practice your shit at your own shows or your friends shows. Yeah. And then maybe some open mics, but I, I'm getting exactly. to the point where like, you know, when you're a, a brand new comedian, you like try to get everyone to like you and you're like, you know, because you want to do all their shows. I'm getting to the point where like, I don't have to do, not everyone has to like me. I don't have to do everyone's show. Right. You know what I mean? I, 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 uh, I just have my own shit or get in with some, you know, do well in front of some people and, and stick with those people. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can navigate your own way. And then the other thing too, like you said about the sponsorships thing, um, when I used to have a show at the improv, I would go to, uh, businesses that I actually liked and I would go in there and I would just be like, Hey, my name's Frankie Marcos. Uh, is your manager here by chance? And, you know, and just, they're like, about. we're not, we're not hiring. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, we yeah. don't park cars here. Motherfucker. Um, <laughs> we don't do valet at Baskin Robbins. You piece of shit. Um, I don't want to buy a candy bar. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no elotes. Okay. <laughs> no, but yeah. And then I would just ask for who's the head dude in charge here. And then fucking, yeah. Hey, I'm a comedian. I'm running a show at the improv. I would love to get some sponsorship. I'm going to print out 5,000 tickets. It's going to go on social media. It's going to go through thousands, do this promotion video that I'm yeah. doing. And then they're like, you know, well, what does it look like? You got a little portfolio. Boom. I got a package A, package B. This one's 100. This one's 200. With package A, you get this. Package B, you get this. They're just paying for exposure. They get to show their dick to as many people as they want. Right, Easy. right, right, right. And yeah, you got extra money. It's a win for them. Right. That's nothing. Yeah. That's a write off for them. And it's, you right. know, it's exposure for them. And they're supporting a young kid. You for be that's a comedian. That's a local. Yeah. So they, they love doing that. Yeah. You got to find like one of our places. I think one of the owners at one of the tap houses we run, I think he wanted to do comedy, but he's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't have the balls to get up there. Those are the people you got to find because they support <laughs> the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Right. All the people that want to do comedy but don't, those are the best people, <laughs> you know. So yeah. uh, they're just dude, watching you horny as hell, doing living vicariously. Yeah. Just they're wow, telling he's really doing it right now. They're stealing your jokes to tell at their job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're winning. Yeah, yeah, they're winning. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Yeah, that's great with the businesses. I mean, fuck it. They do it with little league games and shit. You know, you see the banner out there. I mean, they sponsor shit. Yeah. You're right. And if if they can write it off, that's another selling point. Hey, you write it off, you know. <laughs> but you're right. You know, I it is the business side is not fun at all with the comedy. It's not. But but you have to do it to get your name out there. Right. You know, if you don't have any TV credits, you know, this is what you got to do, which one of the things I want to start doing is make a profilio on um, it's not back page. What is it? Um, <laughs> it's a uh, backstage. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's one of the, it's one of the, web, it's one of the websites I think um, that uh, has the commercials on there, uh-huh. you know, TV commercials and, and movies and stuff. And I, I want to start hitting that hard, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, fuck you get a commercial you could put that down there. I mean, look at Kabir Singh. He did a voice on Family Guy and he could put it there. And I bet you you can get a bunch of fucking offers because you're on Family Guy for five seconds. You know what I mean? Right. Because you're not putting that on the resume. I was on Family Guy for five seconds. You're just putting Family Guy. You know, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Movies, you could just be in the background like, yeah, I was in uh, Gladiator. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah, you didn't even meet Russell Crowe, but you just stood there and you're in the movie. It's not lying. Right, right. I was eating a turkey leg, laying down in the fetal position in the <laughs> in uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dragon killed me instantly. Like I was on screen for a second, but I was in it. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, dude. I mean, do you think about that? I mean, you're in um, L.A. I mean, do you think about going out for commercials or getting these credits so you can get the bigger gigs? Because I don't think it matters how good you are sometimes. I think it's like, who are you? Who do you know? What credits do you have? Right. Have you sucked Sean Connery's dick? You know right. what I mean? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in LA has, shuck, has shucked his dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say it in Scotland. You know? Yeah. Shuck his dick, she. Um, yeah, man. It. I thought about that when I first came here, and I. I originally wanted to is like get some yeah. acting gigs, just like some commercial stuff. Yeah. Um, like, uh, you know, if you get like, like my boy was on a Hilton commercial, uh, and he basically got like, it was like eight k for being right, in there right. for like you know ten fifteen seconds or whatever. Right. So not just impressive. not just eight k. Every time it runs, he gets money. Right. Right. Yeah. So, those yeah, residuals. Actually, Pretty cool. I just been trying to balance everything, but I definitely want to, um, you know, explore that later. I just want to keep make sure that I keep everything honed in on the stand up before because yeah. it's so easy to get divided between producing podcast, you know, and, um, you know, reading and meditation and working out and all that shit. And then the drugs, side yeah. of hooking and all of that shit, you know? Yeah. 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 I guess it's just you got to do a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there, but the stand-up, you're right. You got to stay on it. So you're fresh and always writing and extending stuff and changing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I totally see that. I see that. But the good thing about like the podcast or even with like all of these avenues that you're talking about exploring, even if you did like, let's say you went hard on social media or like that platform, for example, or whatever it is, there's always a way to sort of keep it in your stand-up lane. So like if you're doing the podcast, right. jokes will come out of really, you know, oh, doing, fuck um, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. And then if you're doing yeah. like uh, I've, the most popular thing I've seen with comics to where they don't venture too much outside of the comedy world is the split screen videos where they take a fucking crazy Burger King oh, fight right, and right, then they go right. side by side and they react and they talk about it. Same thing with whatever else, you know, a picture of something, a news article, whatever. But this is how, way. but this is how I am. This is how I think. And I think it's a good way to think, even though this is a guy talking that has a podcast like millions of others, but like you see all these reaction videos, you can't do them. You got to do something new and fresh. Right. So, you, so you stand out. Right. I seen too many of those. I can't, I can't do that. I can't, you know what I mean? So um, we can't pop I, that pussy. We can't. No, no. They've, they've seen this before, right? They want to <laughs> fucking, they want to, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I get that. You got to find your, your little avenue outside of stand-up because you're not always going to be able to do stand-up. 
And doing fun stuff like this or a skit, that actually does work that stand-up muscle, I think. The goofball muscle. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I get that with the stand-up. I, I, I want to hit it all the time. It just it sucks when you can't or you don't have enough gigs or, you know, you're still kind of new like I am. And you haven't, yeah. network, you haven't networked enough. And um, so anyways. Yeah, but the and then the networking thing is a whole nother element that's part of it too, because now they want a social media presence. Like sometimes when you go to a club later on, you know, when you're yeah. like, All right, I'm trying to headline or whatever, they'll be like, yeah. Well, how many followers do you have? Which is stupid, right. but it's just, you know, that's what it is nowadays. So it's kind of like, How do I figure out how do I build that and be open to everything? Cause like, um, like I, I used to, I still do this once in a while, but I'll take like even old ass old school method, but take business cards and introduce myself to people and be like, yo, I'm a comedian. You know, I'd love to connect. I always keep my networking options open. People would be like, yeah, I'd love to blah, 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 follow. And then, um, you never know who you'll meet that way. Like that's how I met my first sponsor that sponsored me, like not even my show. He was just like, you could just rock my clothes all the time. I'll send you all my new shit when it comes out and you just oh, shop down on stage and I'm good. Was that Kanye? <laughs> yeah that's, Yeezy was my first sponsor <laughs> that's dope I would love to meet the guy of Big Dog and just wear all the Big Dog clothes yeah. <laughs> <Remember Big Dog? laughs> no you know what I should have hit up is in Hawaii they have a brand called Woody's Longboards oh shit I gotta that's find someone with my name you know what I mean but yeah that's dude I fucking you're inspiring me to get the business cards, become the businessman, because, uh, like you said, that that helps a lot and will help your stand up, too. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, dude, I I post all the time on social media and stuff and I do get a little bit more, but it's mostly the same friends and stuff. I feel like I do get more followers at shows, but uh, I don't know if they're always seeing my stuff because there's so much stuff out there mm -hmm. so it would be nice to i don't it, it's mind-boggling i don't know if you have to be in something or I, I don't know how you build that up or it just takes time you know what i mean yeah yeah the number one thing is trends that's like you right. know some people are bittersweet about it you know and i get it because if you yeah do shit that's trending you're gonna get views i guarantee yeah and yeah then, that's true yeah. i mean it's your own take right so that's unique about it yeah. um but yeah that's one thing too is i usually like to just talk about the stuff i'm into um but uh you're right exploring i've even noticed that with my stand-up opening up with something about the vaccine just some stuff that's relatable i usually talk about my family and myself Right. Which sometimes, which sometimes, you know, doesn't get them. You know, you yeah. talk about something relatable. They're like, "Hey, we're not a fat loser dad. You know, we're young <laughs> kids in college that bang five or six times a day." You know what I mean? So I got to find something there. But yeah, yeah, dude, the trending stuff. So I mean, are you doing reaction videos? I I haven't even. <laughs> I know, uh, I know. No, but I but I did notice that like when I did something similar, which was take away that split screen and I did the same exact thing, just fucking commentary on some like example. I did one about eating pho in San Jose and I was like, I fucking love pho. Like every time I eat it, I want to cry tears of joy and thank all the yeah. chefs in the back and blah, blah, blah. And just talked about it for like a minute, how much I love it, why I love it, blah, blah, blah. It got really good responses. And then same thing when I talked about getting a massage, same thing. Or if you do like niches, like when I do Bay Area videos, they get good responses. Like the first time I or one one of the few times that I've been viral was the East Oakland joke that took off like crazy. And then uh, it wasn't that crazy, but it, it did do well. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. But, you know, so like that's that's interesting Bay Area videos or New York videos or whatever. Is, yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's smart. I surprised I haven't thought about that. No. But yeah, no, I've seen um, comedians go, this is this is how Bay Area people dance. And they're just like right. dancing and yeah. people find it funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I think you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. But yeah, you know, um, that's that's so fucking interesting with the trending stuff. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, because I have this conversation that we're having right now with other comics too, like Mikey Winfield yeah. is my boy, for example. Um, yeah. He's got three specials out, so he's very dedicated to the craft. He's crushing. But we'll talk and be like, I I'm trying to get more people to watch my shit. So, and then right. we'll go back and forth and be like, what have you discovered recently about inviting people to your shows? Because even somebody at his level with like 30,000 followers and in three specials, he'll be still be like, how can I get more people to watch my show so I can do more new jokes or how right. can I get my social media up? And we'll talk about, Hey, have you tried this, you know, about the way we invite people to our shows or, you know, trendy videos or the style that we post our videos or like what's next on social media, because these are important in our business. So just sort of figuring out, you know, calling each other every now and then and be like, yo, what's good? Like, have you discovered any new keys lately? And just be like, oh yeah, I got this one thing that's been working for me lately. And then yeah. we'll try it. You know, we just kind of keep it, you know, keep in touch about it that way. Yeah, no, no, no. That's cool. That's, uh, that's dope. Um, love that guy's Afro. <laughs> yeah flawless yeah flawless victory <laughs> yeah um yeah uh it's funny that even someone with that many followers still has to do the same thing right that we're doing right right we you all got to do the work yeah you all got to put in the work yeah that balance fuck you got to find that balance with the oh. stand-up i guess during the day you're doing the business stuff and at night you're doing the, the stand-up you know yeah so um that's pretty cool that he's open to helping you. Cause I know sometimes you talk to comedians, they treat it like a competition. Right. You know? Yeah. Just heads up being in the Bay from my experience, the dopest, the Bay is dope, but the best scene as far as the help goes like that is Sacramento yeah. and Mikey's from Sacramento and yeah. comics from Sacramento shouts out you know carlos rodriguez oh yeah he's Mikey cool winfield yeah. yeah lance woods they're all cool as fuck and they're super helpful super nice yeah. um even like you know jen at laughs unlimited super sweet really cares about the community she watches where you're at like she knows they actually oh, give yeah. a fuck. and so yeah, yeah I, I i sent her a clip and she just it said scene and, and no <laughs> response or anything but she doesn't know me that's how it goes but uh they're great up there, the Sacramento people. I've been doing shows. Um, it was the first time I headlined uh, recently was in Sacramento. They nice. gave me the opportunity. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, which was fucking scary. Do you remember your first time you headlined? Did, how yeah, many shits? It, it how many shits? Scary. How many shits did you take before? Oh my god! <laughs> On or off stage? Because goddamn. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. You, you're up, you prepare so much. And then once you get up there, you surprise yourself. You're like, Oh, I'm actually better than I thought. Right. You're like, or maybe not better, but like, I got more material than I thought. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I mean, we, we get in our head a lot as artists and as yeah. comics, always critiquing shit and overthinking everything, overanalyzing everything. And that's, back to what you said about devaluing yourself. Yeah. Um, we get self-conscious. Oh, we're hacked now. I haven't wrote a joke for a week, you know, and it's like, Oh, bullshit. You right. know, that's where the, what helps me is to have fun. This whole thing is about having fun. I mean, it's also about pursuing a dream and, uh, all that, but the, if you're having fun, people will see that. Right. That's what helps me feel better about worrying about bombing or something. I'm like, the times I've had fun up there, maybe my set didn't go the way I wanted to. People fucking enjoyed it. Right. I've even had people come up to me and go like when I've forgotten like my material and it was like, I'm like grabbing for it. You know, you know, yeah. comedians for guys material when he starts hanging on like the mic the stand, mic stand. Or, the wall, or the wall where he puts his hand up on the wall and he's trying to act casual. You know what I mean? <laughs> Searching in that wall. He's like, give me something good. Yeah. You know I, I mean? uh, we always say I, uh, yeah, um, um, I fuck. I go back there when I hear, um, I want to jump out of the car. I hate it. Yeah. But, um, it. yeah, it's like, uh, have fun with it. Um, it's weird though. You got to take it seriously too. It's like, fuck, what do I do? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, anyways, um, how are we doing on time? Okay. We got uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, anything else do you, did you want to talk about? I know yeah, you I told me you told me you wanted to come on here and ask me if I was gay. And uh, <laughs> before the show, I said yes. So 
we got that out of the way but um <laughs> Um, was, anything else? How's uh, how's LA? How's the sh- sh- finding shows, re networking? Um, is oh, it difficult? Man. It is. It is difficult because you know, it, we as we all know, when you move, it's like you you were the big fish in a small pond, and now you're the small bitch in a big pond. You know, a big ocean, right. really. And right. uh, you do have to like start, like you know shoot the fuck out of your ego and like start all over again and be like ground zero bitch like yeah you gotta prove you gotta make a name and there's some of the best in the world are out here so yeah you better yeah. work harder than you did before because it's gonna be a lot harder but at the same time there's a bunch of people out here that are from the bay that i you know i really fuck with and then other people that i've met already that are hella cool and um so as long as you like keep the the positive attitude and you know how to yeah. move and navigate yeah. like it's cool and you just got to trust it and uh you know just let your work talk and you know just don't burn bridges it's all the same principles it's just yeah do that shit over here and trust it just yeah. make sure that you start from the ground up you know right right so um, it's, a, it's a little harder you got to reach out you really have to reach <laughs> yeah yeah and like you said don't burn bridges be cool off stage they say you know right um and uh i guess you know one of the things we hadn't talked about and this is part of it be patient fuck yeah we gotta enjoy the process because sometimes we just are just in i was honestly now i'm pretty damn good about like I'm here, I'm in the ride and I'm in the moment enjoying it. And sometimes I'll be like, fuck, man, like I I fucking suck. Like I haven't done shit. And then but most of the time it's like, okay, I got this. Like I got this. I'll get there eventually. I might not have a special. I might not have this. But, you know, look at where we started at and look at, you know, we've crawled a little bit here. You know, we're doing good. I go having fun. You know, I go. Yeah, I go back to my first set. And, you know, I've only been doing comedy a little over three years. So I go back to my first set and just in three years, it's I didn't even have jokes the first set. I'm right. yelling at people at a bar. <laughs> yeah. And like now I actually can formulate somewhat of a joke and. Um, and it's get like, some strong responses. Right, right. And I'm like, fuck, if I could do that in three years, what can I do in six? Right. What can I do in 12? So. That's kind of like the uh, seeing my investment pay off. You know what I mean? And it keeps yeah. me in the game. And uh, I f- it's like an addiction. I fucking love it, dude. I, I yeah. haven't done. I was kind of working in material earlier because I haven't done a set, a set since last Tuesday. Damn. I'm fiending. I'm like a right. crackhead. I'm like, yeah. that shit. <laughs> you know, but it happens. You know what I mean? I'm going to do an open mic tomorrow. I got a show with Paul Conyards Wednesday Hell and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, show on Friday in Sacramento. So um, you you're going back and forth. Are you doing maybe one or two shows down there, but mostly up here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing uh, I'm just starting to reach out, you know, as of like a few weeks ago, just starting to reach out a little bit here and there and being like, yo, you want to do some shows or hitting up producers. But um, I just been doing uh you know most of my shit out there um and then just like really trying to make sure that when i show up to a show i crush you know and like the past ones that i've done i've done really solid but i'm not like before it's like oh i'm one of the best in here and now it's like okay you got a lot of work to do you know how do you prepare yourself to uh light them on fire to to kill it how do you prepare yourself for that Mm, I mean, I just try to read, read the room, um, you know, before I go up. And if it's, it's a short set, then I know how to navigate between bit to bit. And if I have like a, a heckler or whatever, like I can easily get right back to my jokes because I know them so well. So well. Yeah. But if it's a longer set, then I got to, you know, check out the set list and stuff. But I just trust it now. Before I would get in my head a lot. But now yeah, I just, yeah. like, I'm just like, you you've done this a long time, you know, yeah. you've fucked up a lot of stages in a good way. Like you, yeah. you got it. And even when I don't do good, I still enjoy it. I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. normal. Like stars bomb all the time to this day, right. like killer right. bomb. 
So it's like, yeah. yeah, who gives a fuck? You'll crush it tomorrow. Right, right, right. Oh, my God. That setback after a bomb is probably the oh. best you'll, you'll ever do. Yeah. Every time. I don't think yeah. I've ever bombed twice in a row. Like I've bombed many times. Trust me. But for yeah. some reason, when you come back that second time, yeah, it's the, you just crush. I'm going to save you some pain that I just learned last Thursday. Or was it last? Uh, wait, let me look at the calendar. Oh, yeah. Last Thursday. or no, two Thursdays ago was uh, the 22nd, right? Yeah. So on my birthday, 22nd of April, I mm-hmm. was uh, at Alameda Comedy Club uh-huh. and for a showcase. And I'm first to go up, you know, and there's no jokes before you, you know, you just go up. Right. Oh, you just put you up. And um, um, you have to wear a, a face mask or a oh. mask and I'm thinking and a the mask face or, or a mask. Oh, OK. So I'm thinking the face shield. It's going to be better. You know, you can actually see my expressions in my mouth. I really feel like you need to see someone's mouth. And uh, I go up there and the lights hit it. And all I can see is my fucking face. <laughs> I can't see any of the audience. So like, you know, your first one up, you want to fuck with the audience a little bit. You don't go right into your material. And of right. course, I'm like, ah, what do I do? Go right in my material. And they're looking at me like, who is this fucking weird guy? They didn't get, <laughs> they didn't get me until my set was almost over. You know what I mean? And I right there and then I was like, I don't know if I ever want to book a show on my birthday. <laughs> I was so depressed. And then you got to hang. The worst is when you bomb and then you got to hang around and watch the other comedians. You're like, and they get laughed. You're like, ah, I want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, that uh, next set, I went to Reno, my first out of state show. And nice. uh, the following day. Oh, yeah. And I fucking did well. Of course you did. Of course. You know, so um, that was cool. That was. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. Have you, had a, have you had a bomb recently? Um, trying to think. I think uh, you're an asshole. You can't even remember one of the <laughs> one of the outdoor shows. Uh, oh yeah, okay. outdoor shows was was definitely yeah. They just weren't fucking with me. Um, yeah, and sometimes you know they say sometimes it could be the audience, but I think it's never good to blame the audience. I always blame myself. Yeah, like you didn't work them hard enough, or you didn't fig- figure it out. You know what I mean? Because once you start blaming the audience and, and you're like, oh, it's them and not me, you're fucked. Right. You know what I mean? So, sure. um, yeah. I think that's <laughs> I think that that's about our time. You just look to the right. You're, <laughs> the girl you're dating, not girlfriends, looking at you like, is this guy going to shut the fuck up? I want to go get Burger King, right? <laughs> no, this has been fun, dude. This has been yeah. fun. And we've talked and covered a lot uh eat a dick mike winfield we talked about a lot too hey <laughs> to the game baby no i'm kidding i don't even know the guy i shouldn't say that but um uh i appreciate you having or coming on the podcast uh having me in front of you um, appreciate you coming on to me so strong dude oh my god i like to come on you so, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> hey by the way too i want to say i feel bad I, i'm a little guilty i didn't say hello to your friend there Huh? Your, little buddy, your little buddy right there. Who is? Oh that? yeah, the tiki dude. Yeah, this yeah. is. He's been. Is he a cousin or something? On he? the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cousin? <laughs> <laughs> is that a Marcos right there? <laughs> yeah, I got a another homie here too, right here. Oh my god! Okay, he looks like a little gremlin guy. Yeah, it's Bulbasaur, dude. Oh, Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pokemon. Um. So, Jimmy. Mom. No, yeah, it was dope, man. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, yeah, we got some gems in there. We got some good talks in. And, uh, yeah. Anything you want to promote before you get going? OnlyFans slash Tiki. Uh, Tiki. Uh, Barber? I don't know. Uh, Barber? Frankie M. Comedy anywhere. TikTok, uh, YouTube, whatever the fuck. Frankie M. Comedy. I had new sketches pretty commonly. Um, and um, yeah. so go follow him. And then any shows in the Bay Area, you can uh, plug real quick. Um, Bay Area shows. Uh, I got like Pacifica, San Francisco. I don't know. The one thing that I'm in talks with is the uh, Sounds of Improv. So um, I'll okay. be back there soon. And there, I, I have an email with management right now about running a show there. They hit me up to headline for the first time before the pandemic. So 
that'll be soon. I don't know when, but it, it'll be soon. And that'll be super dope. I'll probably fucking cry of happiness because it's insane. Um, yeah, that is. It's a great venue. You feel like you're in Abraham dude. Lincoln's theater. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, it's crazy. And then they remodeled it. So did you see the have you seen it recently? No, no, no. I, I walked up to the door and they're like, you're an open mic. I was like, yeah, they're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. But um, what, is it more modern or what? Yeah, it's like it, the floor looks like marbly in the front and fucking it just it looks a lot more modern. Yeah, they added those like kind of those glowing bar light things on the back with the night at the improv thing. And it just oh, cool. It was already sick as fuck. And then now right, it looks right. like 2021, you know, it looks new. And now <laughs> like basically the business went from like on a Wednesday show where they have like a comic running it, there'd be like 200 people. Now there's like 400 almost, you know, completely full just because of the fact that it looks so dope. Everybody wants to be there. So like now oh. it's going to be crazy. Like when, you know, each that's this month packed. it opens, it opens this month. Very soon. I don't know the exact date, but um, it should be. I think so. I mean, Cobbs is opening up this month. Right. Yeah, man. That's so. fucking crazy. I saw that today. I was like, oh, yeah. shit, Cobbs and Punch. Oh, I don't know when Punch is opening, but. Yeah. Um, Punchline in Sacramento is open. It is? Yeah. They just had their first uh, weekend this past weekend. Fuck yeah, dude. That's hella sick. Yeah. yeah the comedy store is open. It's, uh, yeah. it's looking up, man. It's going to be a lot yeah. of work. Um, and, uh, dude, you're 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 doing really good, man. I'm sure you're going to find, you know, you're going to get the rep up and fucking have a long ass <laughs> list of, of shows because. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, dude. I yeah, appreciate no, it. I could think of other comics that are, um, you know, similar level or even lower that are getting booked hell so you should be getting a lot more shows i'll hit you up with some contacts um but um yeah man i don't well i don't i i don't wear glasses so <laughs> you up with some people's names yeah okay dad joke but hey i'm gonna get you out of here so you can go be young and dating guy and fitness guy um don't forget about me Bye. Like like E40, <laughs> like E40 says, he's like, I ain't above you. I ain't below you. I'm right next to you. <laughs> oh, with that, we got to end it. Come All on, right, dude. man. That's it. All right, man. Later. All right, dude. Later. <laughs> hey, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? Little Frankie Marcos giving me a compliment. I was just about to jump off the bridge and say, fuck comedy. I'm going to work at Kelly Moore Paints the rest of my life. But guess what? He just gave me a little inspiration, guy. He might do a little comedy for another week. Yeah. Hey, anyways, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. And uh, got to do my, my sponsor read real quick. It's only one sponsor. It's Silver Tongue Audio. Silver Tongue Audio, the number one podcast website to go to for free content. Go to silvertongueaudio.org and you'll see my podcast there, Midnight in the Bay, all episodes right there, free to download. There's no, uh, hey, you want us to send an email? Hey, do you, you got to buy this? No, it's none of that, okay? You just download it, no questions asked, okay? In and out, baby. And then uh, we've got two other podcasts on there that are great, uh, Dazed and Disturbed. It's uh, dark subjects with a little light shine on them with the host and a little help with the Mary Jane. It's really fun, um, interesting, and... Uh, spooky you know so go check out days and disturbed on there at silvertongueaudio.org and uh last but not least uh the old mpc podcast this podcast has been around since midnight in the bay you know what i mean 1985 <laughs> and uh it's great it's uh, a video game podcast um and all there's like four of them and they're all in the industry they're all in the knowing they're, they're connected to the video games okay they're part video game um, and they're talking about interesting, um, exciting uh, stuff, uh, all wrapped in the video game world. And they also talk about addiction, something I have no idea at all what that's like to have an addiction. So uh, go uh, check out NPC podcast, Days and Disturbed, and of course, Midnight in the Bay, all at silvertongueaudio.org. Love ya.